Day two. Here we go. Day two of our RV adventure brings us to Dayton. And in this case, right outside of the city, where we set up camp in style at the Dayton KOA. People love coming to KOA because they know what to expect. It's a safe environment with a lot of things to do. Am I a camper? Not at all. But this is definitely my style. At the park, we had our own private patio with a waterfront view. There were also yard games, a pool, along with the train they let me test out. <laughs> On top of that, I learned the less glamorous side of RV ownership. <laughs> but what wasn't a waste? Learning about the rich history of the city of Dayton. Let it rip. And hey, there's no better place to do that than a visit to Carillon Park, also home of the Wright Brothers Museum. Taking me around today, President Brady Kress. And it really is dedicated to telling the unique stories of Dayton, Ohio. Inventions, patents, uh, the industry that happened here, and of course, things that were invented here, like the airplane. We have the original 1905 Wright Flyer 3 is here at Carillon Park. Do you think they'll let me fly it? Not today. OK. <laughs> Next, it's the second trip. We'll be able to do that. All right, let's go check it out. Yeah. And while I wasn't going to be flying today, inventions have soared in Dayton for generations. Dayton had more patents per capita than any other city in the country. You can thank Dayton for inventing the LCD screen, the cheese hit air conditioning, and the pop-top can. The thing after thing after thing. Like that... All the best things in life. But most notably, flight. And on display, the Wright Flyer 3 from 1905, invented by Dayton's own, the Wright Brothers. The inventors of the cheese it and also the airplane. How can you beat that? My right. goodness, from A to Z. <laughs> Brady, thank you so much. Thank for you. Time. Thanks for visiting. I appreciate it. From learning history to a town rich with it. Our next stop, the quaint town of Miamisburg. Miamisburg is a very charming town. Just this entire area has so much history. Downtown Miamisburg in general is an absolute gem. When you roll through this town, a stop at the hamburger wagon is an absolute must. It's a flavor I love from my childhood. And they're kind of addictive, you know? It's one of those things you're not going to get a burger like this anywhere else in the country. A Miamisburg tradition that goes back 110 years. And it all started when the Great Flood of 1913 decimated this whole region. Uh, during that time, during the cleanup efforts, Cocky Porter took this wagon to the top of Mound Hill and started serving these burgers to the refugee workers. And uh, once the cleanup effort was done and the town was kind of getting back to normal life, the people of the town were approaching Cocky and saying, why? Don't you serve these on a regular basis? And uh, he was out here full time, and the rest is history. Fast forward to today, rain or shine. Every day at 11, the wagon is loaded up, wheeled across the road, where they're met by hungry customers. It's all about the experience. The fryer's turned on, warming up a griddle of grease. Now, is the grease from 1913 too, or no? Yeah, there might be trace of that. <laughs> Once that is warmed, they take their slider patties and cook them up. Grab nine patties for me. And you can get whatever you want on these little guys, as long as it's onion and pickles. You don't need mustard, you don't need ketchup, nothing. Get what you get on them, and uh, that's the way the Lord intended. Delicious, I don't know. They don't have any sauces or any cheese, but they're still good. My taste buds are like, yes. <laughs> it means so much to people that there's a piece of history. It's a unique experience. Where else are you going to go get burgers from a tiny little wagon? You got just bags flying out, you know? Little burgers with huge flavor and a rich history in every bite. Oh, they're so good. <laughs>